Sonic 06, the most controversial Sonic game of all, considered by some as one of, if not the worst Sonic game of all time, as well as one of the worst games of all time period, Sonic 06 tries to reboot the entire storyline of the series, as well as go back to the concepts that made the adventure game so successful. But today we are not going to discuss how good the game is, today I'll show you the cut content, the betas, the demos, the secrets and the things that you probably didn't know about the game. Most of the stuff covered is already documented on the Sonic Wiki, Sonic Retro, the Cutting Room Floor and Hidden Palace, so this video is for those of you who are too lazy to do the research yourselves. This video is part of a remake project I'm making of these 5 videos, with Heroes being the first and 06 the second. I'll be covering everything originally covered in those videos as well as a lot more stuff, as you can probably tell by the video's length. I want to thank all modders and researchers and data miners and everyone that has made this possible. I also want to personally thank Otter with the controller, who has helped me tremendously with showing me a lot of the content documented as well as providing me with footage and screenshots, so make sure to check him out, he's amazing. I also recommend checking out Cybershell's bonus videos on Sonic 2 and Sonic 3, as that's where I got the video and title idea from. This is the me In these types of videos, I always like to start by covering the cut content first, and then analyze some betas, prototypes, trailers and concept art of the game, and then end with a little bit of trivia, showing you some hidden and obscure facts that you might have not known about the game. So let's start by covering the cut content. Sonic 06 has two distinct versions, being the PS3 and the Xbox 360 versions, but I'm not gonna cover each one's content separately as they are pretty much identical identical to one another. If you know a thing or two about this game, you know that its development cycle was... well, pretty crazy, to put it simply. As a result, a lot of cut and unused content is left not only in its files, but in early builds which we also have access to. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Firstly, various different difficulties were planned for most stages. The final game only uses the normal and hard difficulties, with very hard being added in the DLC. But there is a super hard option that goes completely unused. In the cutscene Death of Elise, several pictures appear on the monitor, one of which is a screenshot of a work-in-progress Soliana Castle Town. Even though the layout is seemingly final, several buildings are only white blocks, with the most obvious being the Town Hall. The building to the left of the entrance of the new city is also different here, being much taller. In reality, most of the buildings look pretty different in one way or another. You can also notice two buildings clipping into each other to the left of the tower. On the same note, in the first in-game cutscene for Sonic's story, we see a nighttime version of Soliana which terrain is a bit different compared to the one you actually get to play around in. In the game files, this event has its own separate terrain folder from the Castle Town's main one, containing models and textures that are different. Many of the buildings are missing here, while most of the ones that are present are missing their sides, probably as a result of optimization. The textures themselves appear to be early counterparts of the final one, says they are missing some text and effects, but opposite to their final counterparts, here they are set up correctly. This texture has the word cafe added in the final. This one was made slightly darker and saw added the number 15. This storefront had Gaussian blur added to a portion of the texture where a window would be placed. The same happens in this texture, and in this one as well. Speaking of early Soliana, two grind paths are left over in the game's placement files, referred to as Grind Town A and Grind Town B be respectively, never being used, possibly due to being both buggy and out of place. Due to the way the grind paths were coded, while you're grinding you can face through walls or any sort of collision, which would make clipping through several story segments pretty easy. The infamous cut day-night cycle that can be seen in early builds of the game is actually still left over in the final game, but it doesn't really work very well. Large empty spaces are left behind the entrance to the new city in the castle town, and behind the train station in the new city. This could be a result of optimization, which is understandable from the Castle Town's perspective, but the area be 
behind the train station could be a result of a redesign, as there is no special area meant for it accessible at any point. While walking on the water, during the brief section you play as Sonic and Elise in the forest, a very strange and unfinished particle comes out of the character's feet, being made up of both sand and water splashing particles. The title screen was originally going to give you the option to start over without having to manually delete your save file. In the final, pressing start automatically loads you into your save. A collision flag for slowly sinking in lava, present in Flame Course files, goes completely unused. It was actually meant to be used for dusty desert squeaksand, weirdly. That stage actually features an unused collision flag of its own, which would make you sink, but damages before you do, which would weirdly fit in Flame Course lava. Both of them go unused as they are pretty unfinished, and also appear to be switched for some reason. A mysterious texture file, being nothing but saturated noise, could be found in the files. It also features the word, being at Komatsu, which could refer to Takuma Komatsu, being one of the game's programmers. The use of this file has actually been cleared up to be used on enemies when they go into cloak mode, being referred to as optical camouflage. Similarly, this game has a bunch of unused graphics and assets left over in its files. An advertised screen promoting the release of Sonic Next, being one of the project names for the game, is left over from the Xbox Live Arcade demo of the game, which which we'll be covering further in the video. The logo of Kinagon, probably meant for a credit splash screen, also goes unused. Well, to be honest, I can't confirm this 100%, but before researching, I didn't even know of its existence, and I did finish the game not too long ago, so make of that what you will. Their logo can actually be seen in the back cover of most regions, but besides that, I don't think they're mentioned anywhere. Their program, Kinaps, was an AI middleware program used by a lot of games for the PS3 and the Xbox 360, being later bought by Autodesk and renamed to Autodesk Navigation. A folder called Game Show is present within the game files, featuring some pretty interesting assets. Its name suggests it was used at some kind of event, such as E3 or TGS, but the images for the characters, which look like they would have been used for a character select screen, are completely different from any image ever used in those demos, especially considering that Shadow was never present at any of these. Different graphics for their names are also present, including for the last episode, and a very low quality new text, which I also think goes unused. An image which appears to be an early version of the game's icon could be found. Two loading screens from the E3 demo can be found within the result screen assets. In that build, they were overlaid on top of the striped box on the right, but in the final that box is completely empty, being a remnant of that era in development. An unused pause menu is also present in the files. Weirdly, the blue arrow in this image does go used in the final, being used as the default select icon. The ring reflection texture features what appears to be a very, very early iteration of Kingdom Valley, featuring a broken castle similar to the one from the E3 2005 unveiling, which we'll be taking a look at further in the video, as well as some platforms with some rings and the boxes with a rolled more realistic texture, and some bridges and footholds in a waterfall. This could be an even earlier version than the one shown at that unveiling considering that build had a pretty much final layout for the stage. The only facial expression seen from Sonic during gameplay is a grin. However, two more unused expressions were intended to be used alongside his different facial animations. The first one has him smiling more enthusiastically and showing some teeth, resembling a lot one of his renders from Sonic Heroes, meant to accompany the squinting animation he does when running. The second expression is for frowning and was meant for Sonic's idle animation, being pretty similar to Shadow's mouth texture, though he uses the one in his own archive. In the hub world, there are three types of icons that appear above an NPC, being orange, yellow and blue. However, there exists a fourth green one that can never be seen. Several graphics related to an early version of multiplayer could also be found. Weirdly, these graphics go up to four players, even though the final game only allows two players and three characters, being Sonic, Shadow and Silver. This suggests that at some point in development, more characters were able to be picked, which will be corroborated by something I'll show you in a bit. An unused question mark icon, meant as a placeholder for the life icon, appears within the same texture as the actual life icons. Interestingly, some of the actual used icons look like early versions of their character's model. A texture called gem.dds contains many icons for various in-game gimmicks. Its name suggests it would have been used exclusively for the gems, but it does actually feature more stuff. Firstly, a rainbow gem 
item which can't be obtained through normal means in the final. A reference to it can be found in the shop files, stating you'll need to buy it to see what it does. This gem would have acted as the supersonic gem, allowing you to play as him in any stage besides the final one. You can still access it through hacking and it works. Sort of. All Sonic does is perform a transformation animation and float in place for a few seconds, but besides that, nothing really happens. The other icons that clearly do not fit in a texture named gem.eds are more fit for collectibles or missions, such as a bronze medal icon that goes unused, blue arrows that could suggest a lap count for races, a flat shaded ring which could represent past rings in missions, a dog head related to dogs that the player must guide, which also has something to do with another thing I'll show in a bit, a human head related to human NPCs that a player must guide, a knee that would have been used for multiplayer as an enemy counter, and a star that could be referring to the gold ring, as it appears to be shaded and shaped in the exact same way as the one seen inside its model. Besides the radical and good bonuses, a lot of these in various languages go completely unused in the final game, bearing resemblances to the rankings that appear in Sonic Adventure 2. The texture that contains the images displayed on the stage warp gates contains multiple stages that are not accessible through those means, such as Crisis City and Flamecore. Early title screen assets are left over and unused in the files, being pretty bare bones and incomplete compared to the final, as well as featuring a copyright date of 2005, being speculated to have been used for the TGS 2005 build we'll analyze further in the video. Interestingly, the animation for this title screen is also present in the game files, thus we can see this early menu in all its glory. There is also a placeholder particle featuring a kanji letter which translates to temporary. Lastly, for unused graphics, there are a couple of texture files for unused NPCs in the game, namely for a thief and a painter. The former was meant to be used in Town Mission 9 or Town Mission 3 in some way, but never made it into the final, while the latter was supposed to stay in the corner of the new city dock and watch the sea. Both of them can actually be restored and be interacted with. Well, kinda. The thief just walks around with his bag like a regular NPC while the painter does actually feature some dialogue. They offered to pay me a lot of money to paint a forgery of a famous artist painting the sea, but I turned it down. I want to paint my own art, not get money for faking someone else's. Then the guy took off his head and said, I've been looking for someone like you. It was a world famous painter. He agreed to take me on his apprentice and he never takes apprentices. I'm so happy I don't know what to think. I can't believe something like this would happen. I'm so glad I didn't give up. Also, the painting present in the canvas is a screenshot of what appears to be an early castle town featuring Sonic. Remember when I said I'd show you something related to those dogs in that gem.eds texture? Well, here they are. Dogs can normally be found sitting around the castle town, but they were also meant to walk around the new city. The same would happen with pigeons, though they don't really walk, they just float around. Now let's take a look at some unused objects. There are a lot of them. Like seriously, there is a ridiculous number of objects that go unused for seemingly no reason. Especially when you consider that a lot of them are pretty uninteresting really, such as rock variations in Crisis City. Even so, there are still quite a few interesting examples. A jump ramp, identical to the one later used in Sonic Unleashed, could be found. Unlike the jump panel used in the final, which launches you at a set speed, this one launches you at a variable speed depending on the character's speed when it interacts with it, similarly to Unleashed. There is a present called Download Underscore Object, being a collectible object that can load asset packages and play a hint clip upon being collected. It is only used in a test object layout, probably for a removed test level, which makes Sonic say the following line when interacts with it. The crest of Soliana and an eagle! I see! In Rouge's model files, there exists a model of a weapon called the Batcracker. It has an oval design and bat wings attached to it, as well as a pink heart and two ears. According to an unused hint, it was a mine that you could place in midair, probably functioning similarly to the actual heart bombs used in the final. Press the X button in midair to place a Batcracker mine. You can place them while gliding too. 
Interestingly, the Batcracker appears on Rusha's waist for her loading screen tips, but is never loaded to gameplay. There are also quite a few specific stage objects that go unused. Wave Ocean has parasol variations that can never be seen. Even though the actual parasol is used, its white, orange, purple, pink, green and cyan variations do not. Dusty Desert features damaged flashing billiard balls, probably meant to replace the normal model when the ball reached zero. White Acropolis has unused rocks, different different tower models, broken snowballs, which is pretty weird, and a different glitcher version of the big snowball. Crazy City has a black version of the tornado, probably just a texture bug and not its actual color. It also has a model of a bunch of pipes stacked together, which is interesting, as well as an unused trailer and some debris pieces, like windows, rocks, etc. Flame Core doesn't feature anything interesting really, it has some wall geometry, slightly, and I really mean slightly different models for the foot holds and some spikes. Radical Train on the other hand is pretty interesting. Firstly, another version of the stacked wood model without any rope goes unused. It would have replaced the normal model when you hit it. Secondly, a train switch, being composed of a gauge and a lever, much like its real life counterpart, could be found. Its purpose is unknown as you can't interact with it. It also has a sandbag model, a rock meant to block some areas of the stage, as well as obstacles for Sonic's max speed section, and a damaged version of the train cargo, which I can't really think of any reason for its removal. Most of these objects can be picked up by Silver, having its ESP shader correctly applied, meaning they were most likely planned as weapons for him and were removed because of too much clutter, I guess. Kingdom Valley is also one of the most interesting stages when it comes to unused objects. There are two particle models which look identical to the effect added in the max speed section of the level, though out of that segment they completely blow out the brightness. One of these models is completely unused used, while the other one is identical to the used one, even though it's never placed anywhere. And lastly, for the most well-known unused object in the stage and in the entire game perhaps, the unused wind collision. This is a volume that creates powerful wind to blast the character into the air, using an animation that is otherwise completely unseen in normal play. This object is only present in this stage's files and was deactivated for the final game for unknown reasons, only appearing in the E3 demo where it acted as a sort of safety net for new players. Aquatic Base has two models called Support A and Support B, which I have absolutely no fucking idea what they would have been used for. It also has red versions of the glass doors, meant to be used for the final part of the stage, as well as a lamp that glows red when signaled. The hub worlds also have a few unique objects of their own. Firstly, and pretty weirdly, sets of red tables and chairs are left completely unused. There is also another unused chair, which looks more intricate in design, but doesn't really fit in a plot a cafe. Here is a set of unused barrels, that for the untrained eye look identical to the used ones, but these are actually darker. So there's that. A billiard ball, being very similar to the ones used in Dusty Desert, can also be found among the town's files. The most glaring difference is that this one is completely red and has a sort of swinging animation, meant to be used in a scrapped mission. The new city features fully working stoplight models, meant to accompany another scrapped feature for this town which I'll also be covering in a bit. You can also attack them, so they feature a broken, twisted variation. It also has an unused table, light posts and a giant dominant note that does absolutely nothing, also probably for a scrapped mission or a minigame. Two objects called Glide Rope and Glide Wire can be found among the town files. They seem to do the exact same thing, which is create a grind path between the two points you set. Although they can only go in straight lines, they were most likely used as placeholders for rails. There are also other objects, like candlesticks and a target. And lastly, a lamppost in the castle town which can only be seen in CGI cutscenes. Speaking of cutscenes, they also have a few unused objects. Well, most of these are only semi-unused really, as some can be seen in CGI cutscenes, meaning their model is never actually loaded in game, but it is used outside of the actual game. Such examples are a neck cart, which does nothing besides floating in place, and Elisa's feather, being a really tiny and almost impossible to see model. The scepter of darkness can also be spawned in, which does appear in in-game cutscenes, but can never actually be seen during gameplay. There are also a few unused doors for the egg carrier, but nothing interesting really. 
Let's take a break from objects now and look at some unused animations. The sheer number of unused animations the characters have is a testament to how unfinished this game is. A lot of this stuff is referenced in the executable or in character package files, implying that they were in the process of being implemented but were abandoned due to time constraints. Firstly, all Amigo characters, besides for Tails and arriving from the Portuguese and Spanish word for friend, have unused character select animations, suggesting they were likely selectable for multiplayer at some point, which would make sense of why the multiplayer assets go up to 4 players. Every character has animations for the wind gimmick I talked about, with all of them going unused as the mechanic also goes unused. Every character also has an animation for being held by silver psychokinesis, even though only Sonic and Shadow use it in the final. Those two have an animation for being tossed by silver, but just reuse their animation for being held. Sonic's grinding would have resembled a lot what can be seen in Sonic Heroes, featuring animations for leaning and everything, which would have allowed the player to switch rails while grinding. Even though only Sonic, Shadow, Tails, Omega and Blaze can grind on rails, Amy, Knuckles, Rouge and Silver also have grinding animations. Silver specifically has a typo in his package file which prevents it from loading, having the file type in its name written twice, which is really fucking weird. His main grinding animation is used in multiplayer, however. Omega has the state for using a pulley, but has no animation for it, causing him to t-pose when interacting with one. He also has an animation for balancing on a ledge, which looks incredibly silly, but can never actually be activated. There are a few unused animations for the max speed sections. Sonic has a couple for jumping and landing, that would be used instead of just reusing the normal ones he has during gameplay. Even Shadow has another animation for running, which goes unused, using the same file name as the max speed running animation for Sonic, suggesting he would also have his own sections at some point. Both of them also have animations for doing tricks, possibly for after jumping off ramps or rainbow rings. Sonic, Shadow and Silver have animations for a moonsault, resembling the trick jump they would do by jumping out of a somersault in SA2. Interestingly, Silver's animation matches perfectly with another unused animation he has for a kind of attack that could blow away something below him, as both of them start in the pose he holds when using marks on the ground. Now, something very interesting. At some point in development, there was supposed to be a tag mode in the game, and it was originally going to have a storyline of Sonic and Shadow working together to collect the Chaos Emeralds. Besides some unused voice clips that confirm this, which we'll also be covering in a bit, there are a couple of animations intended for this mode which never go used. Namely, animations for Sonic riding Shadow's Jeep. However, Shadow also has unused animations that would play when he'd take damage in the buggy, which are never played in the final with Sonic also having them. Sonic specifically has a bunch of unique unused animations that suggest cut gameplay gimmicks, or at least some more level of polish in the game. Firstly, he has animations for landing on and jumping off of a pole. The cues to play them are present in the executable but are never actually properly implemented. Here is what they look like when restored. An animation for jogging is also present and completely unused, as in the final game he just kind of walks, or slides awkwardly. He also has animations for doing tricks with a board in White Acropolis, as well as with colliding with stage geometry. Interestingly, there are quite a few animations from the TGS 2005 build still present in the game files, fully working on his new model. He had standing and idle animations which are pretty different and honestly very weird compared to the final ones, with one of them appearing to be some kind of ducking mechanic. He also has his animations for walking, running and falling, resembling the one seen in SA1, and his infamous goal ring slash finishing a level animation. Shadow also has a few unique unused animations, mostly related to the vehicles. He has an animation for being sucked into the flaming tornado in Crisis City, as well as another animation for the trick ramp. There are animations for boosting on the glider, falling out, entering it, which can never be done as all glider sections automatically start you riding it, as well as exiting, which is also impossible, and four different damage animations. Two animations related to the hovercraft go unused, meant for taking damage. They look exactly the same as the jeep damage animation I've already shown you. The same goes for the bike, which also has these two identical animations, as well as for jumping, dashing and doing a wheelie. Silver, much like the other two, has a few unique animations. Firstly, a version of the grab all ability being used in midair. A backflip animation, probably meant to be used with a pole, goes completely unused. Although the final uses a very similar animation, this unused version has Silver standing on the ground while using 
using the grab ball, while the final has him floating slightly. Some of these unused animations also suggest some cut abilities or attacks. By far the most known, the ledge grab. Most of the characters were meant to be able to grab ledges like in SA2. The coding for this move is incomplete, though some attempts have been made to somewhat recreate it. This ability was most likely cut as the level design doesn't really need it. Knuckles has some animations which suggest he could charge his punch at some point, probably meant as part of his screwdriver attack. Shadow Spin Kick has animations for ending the move, hitting an object, and also a full version of the final animation sequence, which goes unused because the actual game splits it into two different sections. He also has a cut move called the Chaos Smash. It was supposed to be a less advanced version of the Chaos Snap, which is actually referenced by the shop assistant, being completely unused in the final game. It actually has an animation left over in the files. Well, it's speculated to be for this, as it's an unused animation for a Chaos move, but besides that there isn't much confirmation. Silver and Blaze have scrapped combo attacks. By pressing the Y or triangle button, the player could use Blaze's pyrokinesis to wrap her in flames. There was also another combo where Silver could pick up Blaze and throw her to launch a powerful attack. Additionally, she has other unused properties that can be restored via hacking, such as a claw attack, where she would scratch when descending. Max Speed Sonic would be able to do a dramatic jump, using the same animations as his rainbow ring poses. In the power-up item section of the game manual, a shield is listed as an available power-up that can be obtained via item boxes. However, if you've played this game, you'll know that no shield can ever be seen. Well, it actually exists in the game files and can be fully restored working as intended. It was most likely removed in favor of the yellow gem. Speaking of it, a beta version of it is left over in the files, being colored differently and lacking the lightning effect. An unused code timer for the spin dash is present, lasting exactly 8 minutes and 21 seconds. It is also called Mario 64 in the game files, which is again really fucking weird. The small gauge under the action gauge used for Sonic is the maturity meter, and was originally supposed to level up Sonic's custom abilities in one way or another. While it can be reactivated, there is no code related to leveling up, thus it basically does nothing. Additionally, Sonic's gauge was supposed to drain when using the gems, which can also be restored. Silver's bracelets were originally supposed to be closed and would open up with his powers, as they are rigged and can be opened when editing the model. Several cutscenes show Silver with the bracelets closed, even though they are always open in gameplay. There is actually one cutscene where his bracelets can be seen opening up when he activates his powers. The homing smash was originally supposed to be obtained via bracelet that Sonic would pick up and wear on his wrist, which model is still left over in the final. This is also corroborated by the fact that the ability is referred internally as homing smash and not color jam as all the other ones are. Speaking of cutscenes, there are quite a few missing and cut events from the game. In the event folder of the game, the event titles for Sonic start with E0000, and increasing the last digit by 1. Every other story follows the same scheme, with a nuance that shadows his E1000 and Silver's E2000. However, this naming convention is broken two times, where E0024 jumps to E0026 for Sonic's story, and E1000 to E1002 for Shadow's story making events E0025 and E1001 completely absent from the game files. It's very obvious that the missing cutscene for Sonic's story is just after the cutscene out of control, while Shadows is just after the intro cutscene. Interestingly, several unused lines for a conversation between Shadow and Rouge for White Acropolis seem to fit its purpose. Shadow, why you? It's a request from the President. Come on, don't underestimate Rouge the Bat. I didn't know that you were the agent who failed to infiltrate the location. I got in successfully, and got the treasure too. I was only a little slow getting out. We don't need to stay long. Let's go. In the game files, there is a leftover picture of Eggman without his glasses, which is kinda disturbing, honestly. A lot of pictures are present in the files that are presumably used by Eggman on the Egg Carrier to locate the Chaos Emeralds. These maps include the errors that occurred on board the Egg Carrier before it crashed. The pictures also include renders of the Soliana newspapers that Sonic read in the cutscene where he returns to the present from Flame Car. The game also has a bunch of unused object layouts, proof of its troubled and rushed development. 
Development. Surprisingly, all three layouts for the TGS 2006 demo of Kingdom Valley are left over in the final. These appear to be almost final or identical to the XPLA demo I'll be covering. Using a glitch as Sonic, you can access the blocked portion of Soliana Castle Town and enter Soliana Forest before going to Wave Ocean. Doing so reveals a pretty odd layout, where you can see double sets of doors among various locations, including the entrance to the forest that can only be seen by clipping through walls. The forest itself spawns a multitude of signs, including the no symbol, checkered strips, stop signs and speed limit designations. The former two have layering issues, thus looking weird. Interestingly, the checkered strips are used in a side quest, and both the stop and speed limit signs can be destroyed with a homing attack. Only the stop sign is unused, but both it and the speed limit signs are a remnant of the cars planned for the new city. Yeah, you heard that right. Playing as Shadow, by using a glitch, you can access the new city before Dusty Desert, revealing a bunch of oddities never seen in normal play. The most obvious and the one I referenced, cars. They are just normal vehicles driving around, with nothing much to them really. Their AI is pretty unfinished, as they often drive into buildings, but they are also the reason of the unused stoplights I've already shown you existing, suggesting this element was to be much more elaborated than was scrapped due to time constraints. You can access a town mission which normally goes unused in the final game, warp gates for Crisis City and Flame Core are placed, thus the unused icons for them being used here, but they can't be accessed anyways, and an NPC pigeon called Hatsune. It does appear normally, but only in Silver Story and after his ninth town mission. The brooding little creature has but one thing to say. Cool. Three unused layouts for hard mode exist in the game files. There isn't much to them really, they look pretty finished and look like they really were meant to be used, as all the other stages have their own hard mode equivalents, so we can only speculate. The game also has specific sections scrapped from levels. Dusty Desert has a bunch of these for example. An unused layout file for the B section of Sonic's Dusty Desert was found in the files, while in his normal level he ever only goes through the A section, which is the big open one. This this layout doesn't quite align with the stage model correctly, suggesting the objects are either misplaced or the level did suffer some modeling changes, and in the final game only Shadow ever goes through both sections. Similarly, Silver has an unused layout file for the A section, which does look like it works normally. He does go through this section during End of the World, but that level uses a different layout. Interestingly, a C section also exists in the files for the level, but ends up never being used. Only Sonic has an actual object layout for it, as Shadow only has lighting data. The objects appear to spawn mostly within the playable area of the A section, but don't seem to make much sense from a gameplay perspective, as multiple objects are just floating above ground and split from the actual model path. This either suggests this C section was an earlier version of the A section, or the places where it does match this section's level model are mere coincidences, and it actually used a completely different model. I doubt this because, I mean, this dashboard panels align perfectly with this wall, it can't be a coincidence, right? White Acropolis also has a scrapped C section. Although no object layout or terrain exists for this part, only a Lua file for it which looks really early and different compared to the final versions used for other stages. It's possible it was intended to be a cutscene or a boss map. There are a ton of unused missions in the game, and when I mean a ton, I really mean a ton. A lot of them are fully functional and appear ready to implement as normal, while others look pretty rough and unfinished. There is a mod that restores and completes some of them by modder Gordon Ramsay, so make sure to check it out. Now, probably one of the most famous scrapped elements from this game, the D section of Crisis City. This layout can be loaded normally, though it will be completely offset from the model of any of the game sections, as the level geometry for it appears to be completely absent from the game files. This layout is actually mostly complete, featuring working path files and whatnot. Numerous pre-release Screenshots of this stage show Sonic in unknown locations from what can be seen in the final, which could potentially be this section, as some areas of the layout match what can be seen in them, suggesting its removal was a rather late decision. Speaking of pre-release screenshots, Tropical Jungle also has the characters running across completely unknown locations. Did you know that, according to the game files, there is a fourth hub world? Yeah, the circuit, which can really only be seen in town missions, is labeled as Town D in the game files 
else, with the other hubs being Town A, Town B and Town C. Even if you can't access it normally, the default music defined is the same as the new city, which makes sense since it's implied to be part of the new city. There is one unused object layout file for it, which contains only one of Shadow's vehicles as well as the unused new city cars. Blaze's section of Crisis City has multiple unused objects past the ending area, including pole objects set up on the lamps before the large tower, being positioned in a way that suggests you jump from one to another, though they don't really work. In the B section of Kingdom Valley, a large area behind the final castle is left unused, having a large cave that has no walkable collision. Even though most of the test levels referenced in the file system have been removed, 11 test levels are still left over here. They are not very interesting, most of them are just zoos with a lot of objects placed in some random areas with nothing much of notable. The most interesting by far are the town tests, where you can see those early layouts for the new city and the forest, as well as a unique layout of the sort for the castle town which can never be seen even by using glitches. The other test levels are what you would expect, with vehicle testing for shadow, grind splines, collision testing, etc. Much like the boost games, where there was a file called xtgmission.lua, here it's called stagesselect.lua, featuring some developer notes to identify each level layout. What was interesting there is that there were a lot of names that were seemingly early names for some stages in the game and never made the final cut. The same is the case in 06, and these notes feature a lot of interesting details about the stages. Most of the entries are in Japanese, as is common, so most of the translations might not be 100% accurate to what they are really supposed to mean. Iblis is internally called Lava Shrimp. Mephiles is referred to as Alter Ego. Multiple entries for removed test levels can be found here, mostly for testing objects for each stage. Interestingly, the test level for Tropical Jungle uses TPS as a prefix, which is a remnant of its old name, being Tropical Savanna. Silver's test level says his final name is Temporary, which is unusual as his prototype name is Venice, and you can actually see him being referred that way in some files. Dusty Desert's layouts are characterized as being temporary maps. I don't know if this means they were not supposed to be the final iteration, but take your own conclusions. White Acropolis is said to be outsourced, which is strange I guess. Kingdom Valley is spelt once as Kingdom Volley. Event 0104 is labeled as E3 2005 Old Castle, which lines up with the location of where the 2005 teaser takes place. And the Scepter of Darkness is referred to as the Book of Darkness. And on the same note, and before we look at unused audios, there are also a bunch of text entries in the game files that go unused. The entry for the shop, for example, has a bunch of lines that suggest cut game features. Firstly, the Rainbow Gem line, which I've already talked about. Silver was supposed to be able to buy an item called the Speed Chip, which was meant to increase his max speed. Music from the previous games also looked like they were once purchasable, though the names for the tracks themselves don't seem to be present. A world ranking function would apparently be present in the game, but was cut pretty early on as the text can only be seen in Japanese and there are no assets for it. The text file for the main menu also features a lot of curious mentions to things that are not found in the final game, including the network, download and Xbox Live options, a mission mode and additional episodes with the super characters, as well as Metal Sonic. He doesn't even appear in the game, so this is pretty strange. And lastly, a text file containing some other text also has a bunch of scrapped features, such as the Rainbow Jam, the Super Form, scrapped difficulties going all the way to Ultimate, as well as SA2 like stage missions. Now let's actually take a look at some unused audios. If you have been watching these videos for a while, you probably know how many unused voice clips are left over in Sonic games. Like in basically every single one there are a bunch of them, which is absolutely ridiculous, especially in this game, with over one hour worth of unused audios. As such, the characters were supposed to be even more chatty than they already are, and of course I won't be showing you every single one, only the most interesting. Firstly, there are early versions of the music for two bosses in the game.
Multiple characters have unused lines for shouting other characters' names, even though they never work with some of them in the final game. Blaze! Sonic! Omega! Rouge! Tails! Amy! As I've mentioned, a tag mode was planned for the game between Sonic and Shadow. As such, multiple lines for both of them, as well as for Eggman, go completely unused. So, I'm stuck working with you. Don't slow me down, Sonic. It looks like Dr. Eggman is after the Chaos Emeralds again. Shadow, we're in this one together. There are six emeralds left. Hurry! There's probably an emerald here too. Don't fall behind. There are four emeralds left. Let's get moving! <laughs> the doctor never learns, does he? Hurry, there are three emeralds left. Eggman's attacks are getting worse. Don't let them do you in. We'll have to work together here. Nice job, Sonic. Thanks, Shadow. I can't believe this. I'll leave it up to you, Sonic. I can't believe I got caught in a trap. I'm counting on you, Shadow. <laughs> About time you showed up. Hey, you're late. I'll drive. You take him down, Sonic. This piece of junk. We'd be better off without it, wouldn't we? The Chaos Emeralds are mine. I'll defeat you two together. Ha! There are still other emeralds. I'll get them before you. You're just in time. I'll take those emeralds from you now. Sonic. Shadow. The next time we meet, I'll... And use lines for Crisis City suggest Sonic and Shadow would also work together at some point here. Shadow, don't be late. Huh. <laughs> You're talking to me? Huh. Will I make it? Shadow! Sonic, let's hurry. Hang on, Shadow! Whoa! Shadow was swept up into the tornado! I've gotta help him! It looks like Sonic was swept up into the tornado. If I use my glider... Three unused hints suggest there was once a switch that needed two characters to push it. This switch requires two to push it. If one gets on, and then another... It should enable a powerful jump. If one operates it, it seems they can transport another. Characters also have unused lines for mechanics they never use, such as grinding. It looks like I can jump up and grind there. You can grind there if you jump on that. On that note, a line explaining how the early homing smash would work is left over here. While jumping, hold the A button for a long time and release to perform a homing smash. The homing smash can blow away whole groups of enemies. The homing smash can crush enemy defenses and barriers. Some lines for the silver boss in Radical Train suggest he could grab trains. If I can hit him with a chaos spear when he lifts up a train, I should be able to create an opening. All characters would say where they should go next, such as the castle town or the new city. Maybe I'll go to the castle town. Maybe I'll go to the castle town. Maybe I'll go to the forest. Let's go to the new city. Do you want to go to the new city? There are voice clips for the characters telling you how to recenter the camera, which is quite strange. Recenter the camera with the L1 button. Recenter the camera with the L1 button. Knuckles has lines for finishing a level, even though he can never do so in the final game. All right. That felt good. Well, that wasn't too bad. Hmm. That took longer than I thought. Shoot. I've still got a ways to go. Did you know that Sonic Man has an actual voice? In the retail game he's always mute, but there is one audio, which goes completely unused for all NPCs, that belongs to him. I can't even begin to describe it. Just take a listen. <laughs> Sonic has lines that would explain how to replenish the action gauge after using the gems, even though it doesn't work. At all. It looks like I can replenish my custom shoes energy with the chaos drives from enemies. It looks like I can replenish my custom shoes energy with the light cores from enemies. There are some lines that suggest cut features of the vehicles. There was supposed to be an upgraded version of the buggy featuring a specially developed gun armor. This buggy has specially developed GUN armor. You should be able to crash into most obstacles without worry. This buggy is equipped with special armor. With this, you can break through obstacles. Some lines suggest you could jump with the bike at some point. The bike is lighter than the buggy, and it's easier to steer. Even while jumping, the left stick controls the bike. There is one line for getting on the glider, which can never be done. As well as for keeping an eye on the hovercraft's energy, which it doesn't have in the final. That's a jet glider over there. Use the Y button to get on. I need to keep an eye on the remaining energy. Once it's gone, it'll take time to reload. One hint suggests you could access the radar map, and it would tell you where to go next if you ever got stuck. 
When in doubt, consult your map and radar. They should tell you exactly where you need to go next. As I've mentioned before, Silver and Blaze were meant to have combo attacks in the fights against Diablis. Take a listen at some of them. Silver, use my power! Press the Y button to wrap me in flames. If you use your psychokinesis to grab me, you should be able to launch a powerful attack. Ha! My flame can penetrate anything! I'll go all out too. Use my flames as much as you want. If you can find an opening and jump on his head, use the right trigger to use your psychokinesis on his weak point. You have to use my power to stop it before it's fired, or use your power to grab it. Unused lines for Dusty Desert suggest the ball puzzle would also be present in Sonic's version of the stage. This ball counts down every time you touch it. There are multiple voice clips for unused and unknown missions. Alright Tails, let's race to the bell! Okay Sonic, I won't lose! Nice try Tails, you're the one that did it! Not gonna give up, are ya? Alright, I'll take you all on! Team Sonic is back! Where is Amy going? I might be able to learn about Sonic if I'll try following her. Hey, Shadow, how about a little contest to see which one of us is the better special agent? The doctor's not holding back, is he? Let him witness my ultimate power! Radical Train's max speed section has a version of random voice actor screaming for some reason. Ah! Oh! 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 Sonic, help! Please, Sonic! <laughs> Sonic, help us! <laughs> Sonic, help! <laughs> ah, my hat! Oh, oh, help us, Sonic! Dear me! Oh, heavens! Help us! Ah, 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 ah. Help! Oh, somebody help! Sonic, help! Ah. Ah, oh, ah, Sonic! Oh, Sonic, help! Oh, ah, oh. There are also a couple of unused title lines, including custom ones for each level, as well as for characters that do not appear in these levels. I think I'm rested now. Shouldn't we get going? <sighs> Iblis. How am I supposed to... What's Eggman plotting? Just wait, Iblis Trigger. Is this really what our future holds? Phew, it sure is hot here. The crest of Soliana and an eagle. I see. Oh, what a mistake I've made. Sonic. This is a pretty cold place for a base. When this job is over, I want to come back here. Lastly for cut content, did you know that there is a leftover debug menu here? These debugging features can be accessed by loading that early title screen I've shown you, having a few interesting things, though not many sadly. Most of the options in this menu just load menus or credit sequence, stuff like that. You can see some text related textures, but that's about the most interesting part. Still, there are a few in-game debug options. A module called Debug Wait can be activated, which works pretty similarly to the free movement mode for present in SA1 and SA2. View Texture is a function that appears to be an early version of how the game renders the minimaps for the towns. By default, the game copies the back buffer and renders it as separate windows, basically mirroring your screen. You can create more than one, which leads to interesting behavior when they clip the edges of the screen, as well as infinitely rendering these windows inside of themselves. Lastly, a disabled camera mode can be reactivated, which allows you to zoom in and out of the player on screen. The camera is unrestricted by gravity and unaffected by collision, allowing for 360 degree movement under any circumstance. This camera is a leftover from some of the game's early trailers. And that's about it for cut content. Now let's take a look at some betas and trailers, starting by the fabled TGS 2005 build. Sonic 06, much like any other Sonic game, was present at numerous events to showcase it to fans and press alike, including TGS 2005. As is tradition as well, this build features a lot of interesting and noticeable differences when compared to the final. This version is actually split into an E3 and the TGS 2005 showcase. The build shown in them is by 
basically the same, but that animation that I'm sure you're all familiar with was actually shown at E3, while slower, more comprehensive footage of the actual game was shown at TGS. Anyways, I'll be covering both in this section, starting by the animation. The animation features Sonic, which looks a lot like his SA1 version, running around an area in or around an early Kingdom Valley. There is not much to this animation really, besides the part where he transforms into Super Sonic. Also, the background music seems to feature a slowed down version of the vocals heard in the finals Wave Ocean Act 1. This song doesn't seem to be present in the game at all. The only stage playable here is an early Kingdom Valley, even though the actual layout appears to be pretty much final. Firstly, Sonic's character model looks pretty different, looking a bit more detailed and resembling more what can be seen of him in pre-rendered cutscenes. His shoes are also shiny and reflect his surroundings. As I've shown you, Sonic's animations are different and are still left over in the game files. They also look a little unfinished, as he uses his walking animation when jumping on a rope, similar to Shadow in the final game's end of the world world stage. The game seems to run a bit slower than the final game, probably due to how early it is. Even with this, Sonic's speed while grinding is ridiculously fast. Debug info can also be seen on screen, with an actual debug free movement mode being present. The infamous cut day-night cycle can be seen here, fully working as intended and can be manipulated via debug controls. It's unknown how it would have worked during gameplay, but it seems that the lighting updates just fine. Some textures are also a bit different. The most obvious one is that the boxes have a completely different, more realistic design. In contrast, the springs and dash panels don't look nearly as realistic, resembling more what can be seen in Sonic Heroes. Strangely, this version of the game doesn't have the wind path, having a curved stone bridge which can never be seen in the final. Sonic's homing attack appears to target the ground for some reason. Lastly, the level ends much earlier, presumably because it wasn't finished yet. The result screen is also very different, with a different camera angle and animation. Sadly, that's about everything for this build. Now let's take a look at the E3 build. Of those events that Sonic 06 was present, one of them was E3 2006, with its build also being pretty different compared to the final one. The game is said to only be 40% complete at this point, which I have to believe was pretty worrying, considering the game was supposed to release 6 months later. The two only stages accessible in this demo are Kingdom Valley for Sonic and Crisis City for Silver. As such, the main menu has these two stages selectable, using unreleased character art. The title screen is a bit different, having a different font for the press start text, which is also different because the final says press start button. The logo is also missing the trademark. The loading screen looks pretty different. It's just a blue screen with the level name and the objective at the bottom, rather than a screenshot of the level with a control tutorial over it. The now loading text also fades away after the stage loads, instead of disappearing completely, which looks much cleaner not gonna lie. The HUD is also a bit different, featuring a Sonic head for the lives, as opposed to his model head in the final. Sonic's meter is also missing, even though Silver's isn't, and the second digit for the minutes in the timer isn't present, not even mentioning the fact that the UI itself is arranged differently. On that note, the hint pop-up text looks quite different, as the font is much larger and there isn't a unique background texture for them, just a grey rectangle. And there are a few grammar errors too. The pause menu also looks quite different. When an item box is picked up, its icon does not appear on the bottom of the screen. Also, the icon for the 1-up looks completely different from the final one, also playing the jingle from SA1. <laughs> Sonic and Silver appear to be a bit faster than their final counterparts. Sonic's foot sweep move slows him down here, allowing for more precision. This code is still left over in the final, but is never used. His homing attack functions similarly to SA1 and SA2, where it has a downwards arc to help the player build speed more easily, whereas in the final it was changed to a horizontal rocket that just propels you forwards. It can also be spammed with no delay and uses different flip animations for hitting stuff, which can only be seen in the final 
by using the homing smash via the white gem. Some of his animation cues are also different, such as using his idle animation when jumping off of the rope instead of squatting. After the player grabs the eagle in Kingdom Valley, Sonic is put directly into his max speed section, completely skipping more than half of the final level. Crisis City also ends pretty early, but still on the first section. The scrapped wind gimmick I talked about is present here. There isn't much to it besides what I already mentioned, but it's pretty neat I guess. The stage of skybox is also different, featuring a clear blue sky rather than the final's overcast one, with the lighting also being different to reflect that difference in ambience. The hindering shader looks pretty early, almost too similar to the TGS build. The X-Stinger has a unique model in this build which is completely absent from the final, basically just being a different design for its missile. When jumping from wall to wall in the max speed section, Sonic curls into a ball before landing. These cues still exist in the final but are quite broken. He also seems to be much, much faster than the final. When the gold ring is touched, the game shows a mission completed text, with the result screen graphics looking different too. It also has no after result with the total rings. Weirdly, the scores are much more forgiving in this build, with 27,000 points giving you an S rank, whereas in the final you'd need 50,000, with those 27,000 giving you a B. Silver doesn't drop any objects from the grab all while hovering, which is the cut move one of his unused animations suggests, even though that animation isn't used here. When his cage is empty, he's still able to grab objects, which isn't possible in the final. Crisis City's lighting is a bit different, it seems to be a bit brighter and generally grayer rather than red. As for layout differences, there really aren't many, strangely both layouts appear to be basically final, but there are a few. The most noticeable differences are in Crisis City, where all the enemies are robots instead of Iblis monsters and the crate layout in this section is a bit different. And of course, the gold ring is in a different area. Kingdom Valley appears to have more hint placements, and some camera placements in this stage are a bit different. Now, for audio differences, there really aren't many. There is that SA1 jingle I've talked about, but the most noticeable differences lie within the music. Three tracks can be heard in this demo, Kingdom Valley, Crisis City and His World, with all sounding pretty early or different compared to the final.
and that's about it for the E3 demo. Now let's take a look at the infamous XPLA demo. The Xbox Live Arcade demo for Sonic 06 was a playable build of the game released on the mentioned service on September 27, 2006, having been built on the 16th, a little under a month before the final and two months before the game's release. It was available for download all the way until 2010, being removed from the service alongside other poorly rated Sonic games. This demo is a shortened down version of the Tokyo Games Show 2006 build, featuring only the first section of Kingdom Valley. The demo doesn't feature many visible differences from the final, as most of the files that it doesn't need have been removed, but the code needed for the rest of the game's content is still present, allowing us to take a proper look at some early elements. While some of what's normally playable is a bit more polished than the final, what's not gives a damning look into the game's heavily unfinished state. Starting by stage differences, enemy placement is a bit different, as it aims to make the demo a bit easier than the final iteration of the stage. There is also a 1-up item box which is replaced with a silver medal for the final. Upon collecting the box, Sonic says... Yes, I knew it! As for gameplay differences, rotation interpolation is fully functional here for all situations, that meaning the characters will smoothly rotate depending on the terrain, instead of instantly snapping like most situations in the final. The collision detection is pretty poor in this build, as you can clip through basically anything by just using the spin dash. This is still possible in the retail, and even though it's pretty bad there, it's not nearly as bad, meaning that they actually fixed something for the final. Every time you lose your rings, they'll explode away. Sonic's action gauge starts off completely empty, while in the final it starts full. You can still fill it up, even though you can't do anything to deplete it anyways. On that note, although you can select them normally, the gems are present within the game and some of them are fully functional. The white and rainbow gems behave identically to the final game, the green gem is missing its particles though the attack itself works, and the blue gem gives Sonic considerably more speed than the retail. So much speed in fact that he might as well be no clip, because he's uncontrollable and will just clip through anything. Much like the E3 demo, Sonic's jump dash still has gravity and a downwards arc. There are also some differences in the HUD. The action gauge will always have part of the main gauge and maturity meter filled, even when the former is empty and despite the fact that you can't fill it at all. And when switching characters, the HUD doesn't switch character icons. Sonic immediately responds after losing a life, instead of the screen blacking out. Sonic never gets stuck or stunned from running into walls. Interestingly, that infamous quote-unquote bug in the final game where Sonic will stick to any ceiling doesn't actually happen in this demo, he just falls as normal. The bound jumps shockwave looks considerably different from the final, being mostly white with yellow edges instead of completely blue. If you earn the good, great and radical bonuses in quick succession, you will earn minus 2 billion, 112 million, 941,584 points, causing the score to be maxed out. Even though Sonic is the only character normally playable in this build, Shadow, Silver, Tails and Knuckles are present within the demo's code and contain various differences compared to their final counterparts. Shadow is able to charge his Chaos Smash, though attempting to fully charge it will just cancel the move, only allowing you to homing attack. This ability is much more like Sonic's, meaning you can actually use it again on another enemy immediately, instead of just starting a combo. You can also charge your homing attack after a jump dash, meaning you're actually able to infinitely chain them together. Shadow's state after using the Chaos Spear is identical to the one he uses after homing attacking, meaning he'll jump upwards as a result, allowing you to abuse the ability as an infinite jump. Silver can infinitely pick objects as they don't train his gauge. This mechanic specifically is pretty incomplete overall. You can pick up enemies after shocking them, but you're not able to destroy them in any way, meaning they'll go back to normal in mid air even if they're above a bottomless pit. Speaking of Silver, his boss variant is also present, and his behavior is a little different. Instead of grabbing nearby objects when he's near Sonic, he uses a ground variant of his Psycho Shock, which is a move that goes unused in the final game. He can also get stuck hovering in the air, for some reason. Tails' behavior is a little weird. When he gets tired, he just drops without any warning, as he has no voice clip or sound effects. Knuckles can actually charge his screwdriver attack, though none of his specific animations 
animations will play, it will just play the latest one. He can't climb walls by jumping into them like the final game, only by gliding. This change may sound convenient, but it's actually the reason of that nasty glitch where Knuckles and Rouge get stuck on the wall and can't jump off of it. He's also able to climb every single surface, yes, every single one, even floors, and you can spam his glide, which is kinda weird. There are also a bunch of menus that go unused in this build, considering that it instantly loads you into the stage after the title screen. The main menu is present here and is fully functional, though extremely unfinished. The text placement in the episode select is slightly different, being misaligned with the icons. The location where you were last in is labeled as restart point, and always displays tropical jungle as a placeholder. There is a total playtime stat which is absent in the final game, and the last episode uses Tails' life icon. The act trial displays the character's full name, rather than just a word. The stage order for each episode is in chronological order with the story, instead of extras and bosses being lost. These bosses also use placeholder text for the most part, not being capitalized like the rest of the levels. The town trial displays the mission's ID instead of an increasing number related to their order. The gold medal results menu only has 160 medals instead of the 180 present in the retail. There is also some untranslated Japanese text at the bottom of each episode. The tag menu has three options, being tag story, tag trial and battle. Tag story will just load you into the unused test tag area, which is still left over in the final game. Tag trial opens a menu which has all of the main stages including end of the world, with two stages having different names, namely tropical jungle being called tropical savanna and aquatic base being a Kurik base. Battle opens a character select which looks really similar to SA2 battles. Selecting any character brings up a battle rule menu, which is still left over and unused in the final but is missing textures. This mode will also boot you into the test battle area, which is also present in the final game. The Xbox Live, Ranking and Download menus can be restored, though they'll either crash the game or do nothing, as they expect files that no longer exist in the game, so there isn't much to them. The audio room is missing a lot of entries, with the entries that are present missing a lot of text, as well as a lot of placeholders. Crisis City also has an extra entry, most likely for the cut D section. The theater room just crashes the game, as it can't load the text needed for the menu. Lastly for the options menu, the background music and sound effects are labeled as dummy 06 and dummy 07 respectively in the audio settings, as well as a vibration settings option which doesn't exist in the final game, as the game doesn't support rumble. Weirdly, there is an unknown menu accessible in-game via the pause menu. Not much appears to be implemented, as it only displays the text status. Aside from some duplicates from the final game, this demo contains a few unused graphics of its own. The assets used for the E3 loading screens are present here. Each of the title cards rendered in the same style as the E3 demo are also present, despite the fact that none of them are ever seen besides Kingdom Valley and Crisis City. Although not really used, that graphic that goes unused in the final featuring the Sonic Next website does go used here, namely after finishing a stage. As for audio differences, the title screen plays a loop of the E3 trailer music, instead of the finals his world. Out of the 5 tracks present in the demo, only 2 are actually used, not accounting for the title screen theme, being Kingdom Valley and the Round Clear track, which are final. Though a unique demo version of His World is also present here, although it sounds pretty similar to the E3 version which can be heard in the actual final game, this one sounds noticeably different and also has a clap track.
an early version of the Invisibility music can be heard. What's interesting about this track is that it's actually called Speed Up, not only in the demo, but in the actual final game. Meaning this track was probably always meant to be used for the speed shoes, even though they are not present in the game at all. The result song sounds completely different from the final version. To finish this prototype's coverage and to point out something really interesting, the trailer that plays if you idle for too long in the title screen has a completely different pre-rendered cutscene at the end featuring Silver and Sonic. Silver is seen standing on a ledge overlooking the ruins of Soliana in the future, declaring that he's found the Iblis trigger, while in the final game he says this while in present day Soliana. Also, in this trailer, you can see a pretty high quality shot of an early Soliana castle town, featuring a different sky box, lighting and a generally more colorful atmosphere, as the buildings themselves appear to be less grey and resemble more what can be seen in Spagonia from Unleashed for example. The lighting in this early version was real time, allowing many small details such as tarps or balconies to cast shadows. Other differences include a different layout with more height variations, different tree textures, more NPCs walking around, different buildings and the cliffs to the south of the town being absent. This shot can also be seen in some early trailers for the game. Speaking of which, let's take a look at some trailers. Well, to be honest, there is still one prototype for the game, which is the review build. The problem with this one is that it's heavily corrupted. It's allegedly being restored, but all of the recovered data appears to be identical to the final, so there probably isn't much to it. Well, there is something to it, which is the fact one file references a folder where the game is called SNG 2.0, or Sonic Next Gen 2.0, which implies this review build was known as version 2.0 and was developed separately from the final game. This could tie in with a theory about the game I'll present to you in the trivia section, so keep watching. Now for real, that's about it for prototypes, betas and demos, so let's take a look at some trailers. The ones you'll be taking a look at are the E3 2006 trailer, which is the same as the XPLA trailer, the PS3 TGS 2006 trailer, another TGS 2006 trailer, the beta intro and the Welcome to the Sonic Age commercial. So, starting by the E3 2006 trailer, you can see Sonic running in tropical jungle without carrying a lease, and also the same shots of the early castle town I've shown you. As for the PS3 TGS 2006 trailer, the text seen in here uses a different font from the one in the final game, which is unusual. The graphic that appears behind the text also appears to be a silhouette of Shadow, when it's specifically talking about Sonic. Sonic can be seen using the homing attack and using the extra flip animations that aren't normally used. This is also the only trailer where the X Cerebrus can be seen, though it looks normal. Lastly, there is one line towards the end of the trailer that Sonic says that is definitely not in the final game. I mean, just take a listen. It's time to think faster. Alright, let's do it! Sonic the Hedgehog. 
Now, for the other TGS 2006 trailer, it features some extra footage of the castle town, mainly one of the bridges that leads to the church, with the plaza in the distance appearing to look a bit different. I don't know what it is, but the low quality doesn't help much in deciphering it. As for the beta intro, this is not really a trailer, but it was released by Blur Studio themselves after the game released, so it's still quite interesting. The most noticeable differences are different camera angles, music, and most notably, the voice of Elise, which is voiced by Veronica Taylor instead of Lacey Chabert, who was actually meant to be her original voice actress. It... it's alright. We give thanks for the blessed flames. May we always continue to have peace. Son of Soliana, guide and watch over us with your eternal light. Lastly for trailers, let's take a look at the Welcome to the Sonic Age commercial. The footage seen in this trailer is either taken from other older trailers or new, closer to final footage, so nothing much. On that note, let's take a look at some promotional screenshots and material. There is a ton of it, but sadly most doesn't really suggest anything different from what is seen in the final. Tropical Jungle features some shots in completely unknown locations, as I've mentioned before, as well as Sonic running through the stage without a lease once again. Crazy City has a few screenshots of the Scrap D section, as well as robots instead of Iblis monsters. The early tornado texture that's broken in the final game can actually be seen here, though it just looks like the final tornado with a bit of fire. Kingdom Valley has a blue sky in multiple screenshots rather than its overcast one, as well as some areas where Sonic can't get to in the final game. It also has some object layout differences, such as a trail of rings in this area. The interesting thing about these early layouts is that they feature these long trails that curve and go beneath themselves, as could be seen in Dusty Desert's unused sea layouts. This practice can never be seen in any final layout, which is something to think about. And Mephilus's texture on the floor looks noticeably different. As for promotional material, did you know that there was a buzz advertisement for the game? It looks really cool, honestly. Magnets were also made, as well as a mug and a tie. There is also this wallpaper with a pretty weird render of Sonic's head. And lastly for this section, let's take Take a look at some concept art. Silver was originally named Venice after the real-life city Soliani is based on. He was originally an orange mink rather than a white hedgehog, and was supposed to feature a much more futuristic design with some sort of helmet and even a headset. A more final design of him depicts him as a porcupine and shows him having a lot of chest hair, psychedelic eyes, and his spines would be bigger, thus making his eyes look smaller. His spines would also come down when it uses psychokinesis. Here is a collection of concept art for some of the minor human characters in Soliana. Iblis looks pretty similar to its final design, though it appears to have spikes on its back, black eyes as opposed to green, and a bloody mouth. His horns are also different, and he would resemble more something like Perfect Chaos. It's unknown what form of it this art represents, or if it was really only meant to have one form. Crisis City was apparently going to be a lot grayer in atmosphere, with thunder being seen in the skyline. There wasn't going to be much fire, just bleak destruction, resembling a bit what can be seen in Station Square at the end of SA1. There are also some storyboards of the cutscene where you meet Knuckles at the new City Harbor. It looks a bit different from the final, especially because the characters seem to be more expressive than they ever are in the actual game. An overview of the town stages can also be seen, which raises some questions, such as how the hell do you go from the castle town to the new city, as well as an art of the castle town, presumably from the first pre-rendered cutscene. Speaking of which, here are some high-quality renders of Soliana as seen in the pre-rendered cutscenes, and some other renders of the characters using realistic fur and rubber textures. These also apply to enemies and other stuff. None of these materials are present in the final game, but it goes to show how much more realistic the game was meant to be. Silver looks pretty metallic though. One render for Elise also seems to depict her with grey hair. Lastly, this isn't really concept art, but I really needed to show this. What the hell is this image? Where does it come from, and why does Eggman look like that?
And that's about it for betas and trailers. Now let's get into the trivia. An entire early script for the game was obtained and leaked by a UK tester to the Sonic fan site Sonic Cult. The document, called Sonic Next All Script, contains some really interesting insight into the game's development, including unused concept art, character bios, a development timeline, and much more in both Japanese and English. The script file is divided into seven different sections. Character info, which has character bios, renewal points, which has multiple instructions for fixing stuff in cutscenes, such as IDs, translations and lines, number voice has the number of lines for each character as well as their voice actor. What's interesting here is that a lot of characters are yet to be auditioned, especially at a time where the recording had already begun, as it began in February without the script being finalized, and there were recordings for the remaining characters between the 14th and the 19th of March 2006, with the script itself having been finalized on the 10th. This is pretty concerning, as they were less than a year away from the game's release, and still hadn't finished the script, nor had held auditions for all characters. And the scenario sections, which are literally the script for each story. Not all of them are translated to English, and some lines appear to be different, but not many are really. It's also curious that the game was meant to have a Russian translation, apparently. For the character bios, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Shadow, Omega and Amy all use their renders from Sonic Heroes, while Blaze uses line art from Sonic Rush. Elise, Eggman and Mephiles use their renders from the final game, while Silver, the Duke of Soliana, Soliana Scientist and Elisa's mates use concept art that was never seen during the build-up to release. Rouge, the Gun Soldier and Iblis do not have any images. Silver's original name was Venice and was based on trunks from Dragon Ball Z. He was also supposed to have an ability that drew from the powers of the Chaos Emeralds. According to the script, he was renamed to Silver on November 22, 2005. Princess Elise was originally named Princess Oliga. Her name was changed on March 5, 2006, after voice recording had begun. The hub world was going to have desert, snow and forest areas. In the final, only a forest area made it in. This is why the script actually asks the player to go to the desert early in the game. A lot of the pre-rendered sequences, like Sonic and Alice in the forest, were going to be in-game sequences. Some bosses are referred to as amigo bosses, which indicates you would have had to fight them as secondary characters. For instance, the script, including the final version, implies that Tails was supposed to be the one who fights Exerebra, which is listed as an Amigo boss. Beginning development after Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic 06 was meant to be a rebirth of the series, taking elements that people had praised in the preceding adventure titles and bring Sonic back to his roots. Nothing pointed more to the idea of using this game to celebrate what made Sonic the most famous hedgehog in the world than naming the game after the first in the series. However, instead of keeping things simple, the staff behind the creation of the game came up with numerous ideas they wanted to flesh out, wanting the game to also also be the ultimate Sonic experience. It wasn't long after the E3 and TGS 2005 outings, however, when the original executive producer of the game, Yuji Naka, announced his resignation from Sega, going off to eventually create his own development studio, Probe. Without this central figurehead, pressure was put upon the director of the game, Shun Nakamura, to release what Sega would hope to be a stellar title in the Sonic franchise, and to help relaunch the brand for the new generation of consoles. Fate would not be on the side of Nakamura and the rest of the team, for development of the sprawling game would prove to be too short. They were pressured into having the game ready for Christmas of 2006, regardless of the consequences, and the game was shipped to less than stellar reception from critics. Many of the features that had been promised were absent, as well as control issues and prominent bugs littering the product. For many, it became the worst Sonic game ever released, and for a few it was considered a contender for being the worst game of all time, promising too much and not delivering anything. Originally, there was also intended to be a port of Sonic 06 for the Wii, but it was decided that too much time would have to be spent to recreate the game on the hardware. Instead, the resources were devoted to creating an original product for the console, Sonic Wildfire, later named Sonic and the Secret Rings. The director of Secret Rings, Yojiro Ogawa, who was also meant to be the director of the entire 06 project, was extremely sympathetic to the final product, saying, The reason why we probably ended up with what we see today involves a lot of reasons. One is that we did want to launch the title around Christmas, and we had the PS3 launch coming up, but we had to develop for Microsoft 360 at the same time, and the team had an awful lot of pressure on them. It was very hard for the team to try and see how we were going to come out with both versions together with just the one team, 
it was a big challenge. A Windows port was also planned and was advertised in the manual for the Windows port of Sonic Riders, as well as flyers for the E3 2006 show floor of the game, but it was never released for unknown reasons, but probably time constraints. There is also a theory for this game that there was a better, more finalized version of the game compared to the released one, but it was allegedly unstable and crashed a lot, so they ended up releasing a more stable and incomplete version. During a cutscene where Sonic, Tails and Knuckles walk through a ruined hallway in the future, Knuckles' model can be seen collapsing into a ragdoll slightly off-screen. The manual states under Tails' and Omega's character bios that you can use their fly and hover abilities until the gauge runs out. However, in the final game there is no such gauge. The English voice actress Veronica Taylor was intended to do the voice of Princess Elise. Allegedly, she even recorded all her lines for the game, but for unknown reasons she was replaced by Lacey Chabert. In an interview with GameSpy, they asked her if Sega ever told her why they wanted her for the role, answering, they just told me that they thought my voice was appropriate for the character. The word Iblis, which is used as the name for one of the game's bosses, is an Arabic word which translates as devil. Similarly, there is a clever wordplay involving Blaze's choice of words present in the Japanese dialogue. The Japanese word for the color blue is Aoi, and the Japanese word for the adjective naive is also Aoi, so Blaze's mentioning of blue hedgehog is Aoi hedgehog in Japanese, which can be taken either way. In the cutscene where Sonic returns to Soliana from the future, the newspaper he picks up has the title misspelled as Daily Soriana. In Shadow's story, after you ignite the flames around the fountain in Soliana and receive the scepter of darkness, you'll receive a message from Gun that will tell you where you have to go next. The dialogue in this message contains two takes from the voice actor, the first take being a failed attempt. E123 Omega has engaged methods. Head to the wave ocean, head to wave ocean. Agent Shadow, E123 Omega has engaged methods. Head to wave ocean immediately. In Silver Story, when Mephiles is explaining to Silver and Blaze about how to save their world, if you look closely behind Silver, you can notice that there are Sega logos on the poster behind him. The dialogue of the last story's Embers of Solaris cutscene differs between the English and Japanese versions. In the English version, Elise asks if Sonic has destroyed Solaris, to which he replies that he did not, followed by him saying that the light approaching them is the true Solaris. Did you destroy it? No. That is the true Solaris. In the Japanese version, Elise questions if it is over, Sonic replies with no, and comments that the light that is approaching them is Solaris' spark. It is possible to reach Ares with a character that the developers did not intend for that character to reach. For example, you can enter the area right before the end of Silver's first section of Aquatic Base as Shadow, using a glitch that allows Shadow to go through walls. Not only can you explore this area, but Silver's voice clips play when you are Shadow as you enter the last room of the first section. Almost Almost every character can achieve a trick like this. Speaking of which, let's take a look at some glitches. The amount of glitches present in this game is absolutely ridiculous. There are a lot, and I mean a lot of bugs and small technical errors in this game that just corroborate the fact that this game is really, really incomplete. One of the most popular glitches is that skip I've shown you that lets you access the test forest layout. By going near the trail of rings that lets you go to wave ocean, you can jump around the invisible wall that blocks you off from the rest of the castle town. If you get enough distance, use your jump dash and jump off of the water, which is a thing you can do for some reason. You'll be able to reach the other side, which is otherwise pretty empty, missing a lot of objects, gates and mirrors. Normally, Sonic is the character that finishes his version of Flame Core. However, a glitch in Knuckles' section lets you finish it in his place. To do this, you have to glide to the uppermost section of the area, right next to the door that switches you back to Sonic, and then press the jump button. If performed correctly, you'll end up in a black area between the two rooms. If you glide into the other room, after some time you'll be able to reach the goal ring and end the stage as Knuckles, seeing his unused animations and voice clips. You can also do something similar with Omega in Wave Ocean. When you first start the stage as him, turn to the small pier and walk as close to it as possible, then hit the jump button to hover. Normally, the invisible collision won't let you pass, but if you start hovering from high enough, you're able to bypass it. After this, you have to 
go to the rocks where Sonic runs through the loops and land on each one. When you reach the small island, walk to the small pier and repeat the same process as from the first pier. Then go to the nearby rock and stand on it. From there, hover to the cliff and when you land on the bottom, jump to the other side of the loop and walk up to the cliff. When you get to the top, you can walk to the first house on the right and then hover over it until you get to the goal ring. When playing with Blazing Wave Ocean, you can fly outside the map. While grinding on the lighthouse, stop and stand behind this wall. Then press the action button. You'll be sent flying so quickly that the motion blur distorts the screen until Blaze goes off screen. You'll end up dying, but it's pretty cool I guess. Now, for one of the most popular glitches in this game and in the entire franchise perhaps, the flying box. In Soliana New City as Sonic, jump on a box and start spamming your food sweep move. The box will start to fly for some reason, and if you do this for long enough, you're even able to leave the skybox. You can actually do it in any of his levels, though it's usually harder to do so. You can also use the Sky Jam to perform a gun drive in the new city to fly high enough to go inside the buildings, as their collision doesn't extend to the roof. There isn't much to them as they are shallow inside, and you can only leave them by doing the same thing again. A really OP glitch in this game is the ability to clip through doors, allowing you to skip entire sections of levels. As Sonic, you have to stand on the corner of a door and use the Sky Jam. As Shadow, stand near the corner of a door, jump and press pause right away, then jump again after unpausing to perform a homing attack, and as silver, sometimes you can use physics objects to jump over the door's collision. Every character, except for Knuckles, Amy and Blaze, has a unique method of hovering over large gaps. Shadow can spam his Chaos Spear to descend slowly, Silver and Omega can spam their hover abilities, as each time you start hovering again the height will reset. Sonic can spam his Purple Gem as it doesn't train its gauge, and Rouge can drop her bomb which will make her freeze in mid air and reset her gliding height. During the Egg Wyvern battle, by equipping the Sky Gem, throwing it onto a platform and immediately grabbing one of the boss's wings, the game will freeze and the battle will abruptly end, instantly awarding you an S rank. Another notorious glitch in this game is at the end of Wave Ocean's max speed section. For some reason, depending on how you enter the last loop, the spline will guide you out of the loop as you're about to hit the jump panel, resulting in a death. What will happen most times is is that you'll end up falling off of it and then still hit the jump panel. You can actually utilize this to your advantage, as you're able to launch yourself directly into the goal ring. Do you hate Silver? Do you wish you could just never play as him? Well, you can do that. In Sonic's Kingdom Valley only though. To do this, reach the area where you're supposed to switch to him, then spam your purple gem until you reach the eagle. That's literally it. You can skip entire stages with this fucking gem, if you didn't guess by now. Speaking of the purple gem, you can use it to freeze Wave Ocean. If you use it to skip Tails' section and activate the switch, the camera will change to the sequence where Sonic's supposed to jump off of the whale. But since the game expects Tails to do it, nothing happens. I don't know why you'd ever want to do this but you can. Lastly, a very, very broken glitch. In the Xbox 360 version of the game, there is a major glitch that lets you complete Sonic Story in under 10 minutes. To do this, play Sonic Story as normal until after the silver boss battle. Then when you're put back into the castle town, go to this woman named Galiena. Once you're there, quickly homing attack her and start talking to her. Doing this correctly will cause her to move a little bit. If you keep doing this, she will eventually end up near the water. Do this one last time as you're about to die in the water, but this time don't reject her mission and hold the action button. Once you respawn, head to the captain, pause the game, release the action button, then press the Xbox home button. Press it again to close it and hold the action button once more. The game will unpause and go through the captain's dialogue, and you should accept his mission. Hold the start button while loading so the game instantly pauses when it loads. Then press the quit mission option, which will result in you getting the credit sequence. Even though Sonic's story is technically 100% completed, None of the story flags are filled, the shadow story and multiple level acts are still inaccessible. The song Town Mission 4 shares a similar melody to the music from Mega Man 2's Flashman stage.
The vocal sample for the last part of Wave Ocean's The Water's Edge track is taken from the Public Enemy song Bring the Noise, being a mix of the lines How Low Can We Go and Here We Go Again, making him say something like How Low Here We Go, eh? How low can you go? There we go again. Please. How low can you go? There we go again. The credits music for Sonic Story Ending Theme, Sweet Dreams by Akon, I don't think he even remembers making this song, is the same tune as the ending theme in Sonic 2. <laughs> If you were to compare the info given from the official guide for the game to the gameplay itself, several interesting differences can be gathered. Some screenshots in the guide have Sonic's life icon for every character, suggesting it could be taken from the E3 build. The guide mentions that Omega's hover ability and Tails's fly are bound to the energy of the action gauge, along with screenshots that show the characters using these gauges. Several abilities and gems have their details contradict what is seen in the final. The max speed, aka the blue gem, would work the same way as what is now the boost. The dummy ring bomb would throw an empty item box, and the teleport dash could have warped through an enemy and its attacks. According to Shiro Maekawa, he had written a draft for the game story that would have connected it more clearly to Sonic Rush, though nothing has ever been revealed about it. When Takashi Izuka was questioned about the apparent inconsistencies of Blaze's role in the game compared to those in Sonic Rush, he stated that the reason no one expressed familiarity with her was because everyone had amnesia. Maekawa has all but confirmed on Twitter the theory that the original intent for Silver's ending was that Blaze was returned to the Soul Dimension. He has also implied that Blaze still houses the power of Iblis inside her soul, and that she has quote-unquote tamed it to access Burning Blaze, hence why she briefly becomes Burning Blaze after absorbing it. In the video celebrating the 25 years of Sonic, a timeline is shown with a cheerful description of every game, except for Sonic 06 which just has its now loading graphic. The story of the game has three main themes, past, present and future, hope and despair, and do the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. For the first, Shadow, Soliana Forest and All Hail Shadow represent a past and moving on. Sonic, Soliana Castletown and his world represent a present and living in the moment. And Silver, Soliana New City and Dreams of an Absolution represent a future and questioning if you'd change the past if you could travel to it. As for the second, Solaris was originally called the Flame of Hope, but became despair ten years later when Mephiles was released. Silver and Blaze are the only hope in the future of despair, Silver and Elise are the hope in the last story, with Super Sonic, Shadow and Silver being the hope that fights Solaris' despair. Similarly, there's the idea of the fight between light and dark, such as Solaris and Mephiles, the Scepter of Darkness and the Altar of Light, as well as Soliana, which is always shown in bright sunshine against Crisis City. And for the Last, a listen Silver story greatly discussed the ideas of the needs of the many outweighing the needs of the few. Elise must not allow herself to cry for the good of her nation, while Silver believes he must kill the Iblis trigger in order to save the future of the world. After meeting Sonic and Amy respectively, their viewpoints get a bit shaken, as Elise wishes she was more selfish so she could enjoy things with Sonic, and Silver questions if killing one person to save the world is the correct choice. And lastly, I couldn't end this section without shouting out 
two incredible community projects being Legacy of Solaris and Project 06. Legacy of Solaris is a mod that tries to restore a lot of the cut content present within the game, such as the gauge working correctly, restoring Sonic's flip animations, restoring each character's own HUD colors, the bound jump keeping momentum, silver being faster, whatever type of quality of life feature you can think of is probably implemented here. I use this mod quite a lot in my background footage, as it makes the game so much better to play, it's actually unbelievable, so make sure to check it out. And shout out to their Discord community, which were always very keen and available to help me when needed. Project 06, or P06, I'm sure you're all familiar with. It's a remake of the game on the Unity engine, featuring improved graphics and controls, as well as a lot of restored cut content, added quality of life features, as well as in-level cutscenes and interactions, including some that were scrapped from the final game. It's all really neat and lovingly made. Sure, there are some things that could be improved, such as adding the stories, towns, Chaos exchanging his opinion on heroes, but all things considered, it's really, really good. Make sure to check both of them out, their links will be in the description. And that's about it for this episode. Sorry if this one took longer than I expected, I got sick in the process and couldn't record anything, so that's why I sound congested around the 30 minute mark, because I just couldn't stay doing nothing for so long, so sorry about that. I have a Patreon where you can support me for quite cheap and get a few perks, like early access to videos, your name at the end of the screen, etc. If you got any money to spare, please consider checking it out. It helps me a ton to keep making this for you for a long time. If you don't, then please consider subscribing if you enjoy my content, as it does really, really help me out a ton. And since these videos usually take a bit to come out, I recommend turning on notifications, so you do know when they're posted. I also have a Twitter if you want to follow me there, and check out my community tab once in a while, as I post quite frequently with video news, updates, etc. And that's about it really, I'll hopefully see you soon.